This is Noel from Trilosophy.com, here with AJ Vasquez of the Loveland Boxing Gym. He's a trainer and owner of the gym. What's up, man? What's going on, man? What's happening? Just another day of training, getting ready for some tournaments. Day in, day out. You were a young boxer. Um, how, how, did, how did you get into it and why? Uh, my whole family was in boxing, man. I had a cousin um, growing up, like everybody knew who his name was Roland. Everybody knew who he was, like he was like a little Colorado legend. And um, so I think everybody in our family, like growing up, wanted to be like him. Like he fought Sugar Ray Leonard in the amateurs, and he's like one of the only people that beat him in the no amateurs. Way. Yeah, it's just, it's documented. You can look it up. His name was Roland Vasquez. I'll so, be sure I will be doing that. Yeah, look him up. <laughs> I mean, he was a, okay. like I said, he was a local legend, kind of went down the wrong path though, but he could have been, I mean, from what I've met people that told me about him, like they said that he could have been like one of the greatest. And um, but he just went a different route. So I think everybody in my family wanted to be like him, you know, like he was the mark. So, you know, my dad, you know, him and they were real close. So he was like, as soon as we could put on a pair of gloves, he put us in the gym. How old were you? I think we were like seven or eight. We lived in Minnesota at the time. We lived up in Brainerd, Minnesota. So we, we, lived, we lived there for like 10 years. So we did Taekwondo and we did boxing. You keep saying, saying we. Is, my is brother. you and your brother. Yeah, my, I have one brother okay. and my dad. So, okay. so yep. you and your brother, he also helps you run things here? Yeah, my brother helps me run the gym. Um, I got a partner named Mike. Since I first opened up our first gym back in 2010, you know, us, me and Mike have always worked together. Okay. And then um, since my brother's been back from vacation, he's been helping us out too. So, yeah, so uh, why did you continue to box when you were, when you were young? Um, I always tell people, man, like boxing was like, you know, like boxing like attracts a certain kid, you know? They got, they just got like a different type of issue than most people. And I think boxing like, like for me, it was like my way to get out. Like my, it was my way to hit something without getting into trouble. It was like, you know, like any any kid that, like especially like in the Mexican world, it's like you hate your, you hate your dad. That was my way of like getting back at him, you know? So like I just kept boxing and boxing and boxing. And then, um, you know, I wish I would've stayed with it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you mentioned you got into, you were getting into trouble in the years later. You know, how, how did this affect your, your boxing career or just you, uh, your training? Um, well, I mean, it put it, it made it come to a complete halt. I mean, uh, you know, I had a trainer. Um, you know, I started off in Minnesota, but then when we came down here, his name was Robert Johnson. I mean, to me, he was probably the greatest boxer I've ever seen in my life. And I thought he was the greatest trainer. And um, he was taking me and my brother everywhere we wanted to. And, you know, we were, we were doing really well. Um, and then we both decided to go a different route. And um, he kept training. We decided to go this way. And training just wasn't in the picture no more. So, I mean, who knows where we could have been, you know? Uh, what did the sport do for you as a whole? In general, everything. As a kid or as a, an adult? Well, let's say right now as an adult. What, what, what do you think uh, the benefits are to joining boxing? And I think as an adult... Um, you, opened a, you opened a boxing gym. Yeah, you, but did, you did this for the kids. I did it for more for the kids. I, you know, I got older guys, you know, obviously over 18. You know, I got guys that are um, looking to go pro. Um, I think for the kids, like, what it does for them, it just... Um, it teaches them like a discipline that I don't think they'll, they, a lot of them don't get. I mean, obviously there's people that, you know, have a, a good background in boxing, it's just a good sport for them. For a lot of them, they don't have that background like where I come from. So I think boxing teaches them like something that, like I said, de discipline, dedication, hard work. And then also like there's a reward to it. You know, there's, there's national tournaments that you can win, there's rankings, there's making the Olympic team, you know. And then further on down the line, when you get an adult, you can go pro. Obviously, you can make a good living doing that. So I think it, it translates from being a kid to an adult. Like you learn all the, you know, the the foundation, you know, sure. discipline, the hard work, what it takes. You get a little taste of success as you get in the, you know, you want to continue as you get older. There's a bigger reward, you know, because now that rewards dollar signs. Absolutely. So, um, you know, you've mentioned to me before. You know, you have kids that come in here. Uh, you try to help them just to open your doors. Some of them don't even box. They they even just come here just to do their homework. Yeah. But they, I mean, 
it's important for them to feel a part of something. Right. So, I mean, is that something because of your past that you wanted to kind of pass on to like keep kids out of, out of the streets, out of, out of trouble? Yeah. I, I, for me, it's a, it's a big deal. You know, like I think boxing is like a, it's obviously an individual sport, you know, it's you and the other person in the ring. Um, but like as, as a whole, everybody knows what it takes and, um, it's a tough sport. You know, everybody, I always hear people saying like wrestling, wrestling or football, football, but like Mike Tyson said it best, you got to plan until you get punched in the face and then you find out what you're really made of because nobody else is getting punched in the face. So I think with knowing that, you know, everybody, they help each other, they push each other. When one person's slacking, they pick them up. But like what you said with the kids, you know, that, like I said, there is kids that they don't ever want to compete but they see like some of their friends or maybe their cousins or whatever. They want to like, they want to be part of it too, but not necessarily box, but as long as they're in this room, they're, they're part of it. So if they're not, then well, then they know they got to do homework. They got to, they got to do something. They got to, you know, contribute in some way. And if it's doing homework to me, that's, that's more important than being in the ring, you know, because we're trying to build for their future, you know, so. So you told me this is a competitive, boxing program that you're running here when i first first called you, yeah i inquired about maybe putting my daughter in right and you said this is a competitive boxing program elaborate on that well i think uh i would say when we say competitive you know i, I would say out of i would say about 80 90 percent of every, all the kids and the adults in here compete the 15 10 percent that don't i still think they're competitive because they're working just as hard when i when i run my classes there's no I got eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds from four to five, or no, it's like everybody's in the same class. So whether or not you're, whether you're competing at a, a national level or you're just coming in here to mess, you know, mess around with your, your cousins, your family, whatever, sure. you're still doing all the same workouts. And I expect everybody that's in here to do the same workouts. Um, so in that aspect, it is competitive because I don't think any, not anybody can just do it. Do you take the kids to tournaments? I take the tournaments all the time. So how often are you doing it? Every couple months. Every I would say I would say one to three months we're going to a tournament, whether it's a state tournament, a regional tournament, or a national tournament. So I think last year we hit I hit 2017 I think we hit seven, eight, seven, eight tournaments wow. that were out of state. And that wasn't now if you want to include like the state JOs, the state golden gloves, state silver gloves. You hit all those too. What is your main goal out of all of this? You, you opened the Loveland Boxing Gym in a different location. Right. Was that your first gym? Well, our first gym was actually called Lights Out. Okay. That was back in 2010. Okay. So we were down to, downtown Loveland. Okay. Um, that was a whole different. That was a whole different world back then. Like we um, that gym was specifically just for people competing. Um, I had a couple of pros back then that I was training too, so we didn't have. It was a lot different. We looked at it different, um, but I learned a lot from there, and that's why I changed the name. Um, we changed location. Um, we made it a little bit more lively, you know, as like more welcoming, if you want to say. Sure. Just because I, I saw what we were missing out, you know, because when we would say, "No, we we don't want to train you," just because you're not really wanting to compete. Yeah. So we we you know when we switched, that's when we switched the name to Loveland Boxing. Um, we took the club out of it. We took out, we used to be called Lights Out Fight Club. And, uh, but we had some good kids back then, man. We had some killers back then. Very good. So, but the main goal though is just, I want to see some kids succeed in here. You know, I got some kids I think that right now could make it, you know, if they just keep with it. Yeah, it's uh, Colorado. I mean, there's a lot of pros that go to Colorado Springs, uh, Olympic Center right there. Yeah. The train, you got Adrian Broner, I mean, they're not from Miami. Colorado, though. They're not from Colorado, exactly. No. But it's like, like, you want to see somebody from Colorado, yeah. and you want to build up that champion and yeah. have somebody notable out of the state. Right? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm one of the, the few from Colorado. Like, I got love for everybody from Colorado. If you're from Colorado, I'm all about you. Um, so, yeah, I'm real big on the Colorado fighters. I, I mean, I respect everybody. I mean, it takes a special kid to, to compete, you know, and that's cool. They're from California. Everybody's on them. Everybody's on the kids from Texas, New York. But, you know, yeah, I'm real big on the people from Colorado. I follow them all. And right now, you know, we got, you know, Salam. He's going to the, he's hopefully going to the Olympics if they don't take out the 106. Okay. He's from Colorado. You know, we got, we got some good kids that are going to the National Golden Gloves, I think, that can compete real well, you know, on a national level. And 
possibly the Olympics, you know, besides Simone. So, I, I mean, I think Colorado, like in the next 10 years, you're going to hear a lot of names out of Colorado, like just with the crop that's, you know, that's, that's out right now, the, the 11, 12-year-olds that are out. They're, I mean, there's some good ones.